Now, as we all know, villagers in Minecraft like to scam people. Exhibit A. Here's a villager, here's a lectern, becomes a librarian, 18 emeralds, and a book for Fortune 1. I don't think that's worth it, is it? Now, we have two solutions. Either figure out how to get a better discount, or summon a villager with better trades. Or more specifically, custom trades. And what is a command block tutorial if you don't have a command block? So we're just going to do slash give at p minecraft command block, place it down, get a button. And now we can actually start. So once we open it up, we can do summon minecraft villager squiggly thingy, squiggly thingy, squiggly thingy one. So essentially this villager will spawn a block above us. Now we can give this villager custom trades. So the first thing we're going to do is add in two curly brackets at the end. And this is where all our NBT tags go. So the first thing we're going to add in is villager data. So this tag will contain the data of the profession of the villager and what type of villager it is, what level it is, all of that. So we're going to put in two more curly brackets after villager colon data. Then we put in level and then what level. So we can go from one to five, one being stone and five being that diamond icon. So if you do three and summon the villager, Okay, you can't see it right now because he doesn't have a profession. So after the number three, we're going to put in a comma and then type in profession, colon, two quotes, Minecraft. So I've got all the usable professions a villager can have on screen and in the description, but you can also go to the wiki, which I've linked down below as well. So for the profession, we're just going to add in Minecraft, colon, librarian. So now if we summon the villager, he's going to come in as a librarian. And we've given him level 3, so he's going to have a golden... Uh, you're walking away, bud. He is going to have a golden hilt. A, a golden thing. The, a thing. Gold. Stop walking. Now for the villager data, we can add in one more tag. And that is type. Colon to quotes. Then we can have a list of types on the screen and in the description. And the wiki. We can change the villager's overall look and what biome it's from. So we can do Minecraft Swamp. And we'll summon a villager from the swamp. Yeah. And we can do the jungle. Yeah. But I personally like the snow biome, so I'm going to summon a villager in the snow biome. Yeah. So right now, if you open up the villager's tags yeah. as a librarian, it's going to be a normal librarian. Telling me protection one for 16 emeralds. Don't worry, yeah. we're going to fix that. So after the inside curly brackets, we're going to put in a comma offers with a capital O. Then a colon and then two more curly brackets. Now the one problem I have with Minecraft command blocks is that we can only program on one long line and as the command gets longer and longer it will become it will become extremely irritating to program. So instead of programming in a Minecraft command block we're going to make a JSON file on our desktop and just copy and paste the code. So the first thing you want to do is open your file explorer then bring down a drop down, go to view then enable file name extensions. Once we do that, we can close the file explorer and just create a file on our desktop. New text document, and you can see a .txt at the end. So we're just going to select everything, call this villager with big brain, and then the important part .json for JSON, because Minecraft commands actually run in this language. So if you create a JSON file with enter, then press yes, then the icon changes for me because I use a text editor known as Sublime. I'll leave a link in the description to download it. Because once I open this with Sublime, then I can actually start programming in JSON. And it's very similar to Minecraft commands. So, all we have to do is just recreate the code in the command block. Summon Minecraft Villager, the three tildes, then open curly bracket and close curly bracket, but in this program it just opens and closes it for you on the first open curly bracket. And instead of coding on one continuous line, we're just going to press enter inside of them. Now that actually opens it up. Now this is where we can put all our tags instead of coding on one continuous line. So we can now start doing villager data with a capital V and D, colon, and the curly brackets, press enter. The level, as we specified, is three put in a comma for the next thing. Profession. The profession is Minecraft Librarian, comma, type is going to be Minecraft Snow. So if we do Control A, Control C to copy, then go into Minecraft, then we can actually go into the command block, 
do control V and press done. And now if we summon the villager, it's going to work just as normal as before because the code is just recreated in a different text editor. But unfortunately, he's still a normal... What? Luck of the sea? What? So back in the text editor, we have villager data. And in subline, if the brackets are selected, they will highlight each other to show that they are connected. So if this is one tag, then you can put a comma, press enter, then you can type in offers, colon, brackets, enter. And now this is where things start to get quite long, which is why I'd rather program like this, because not only it will look really complicated, but it will look really nice. But trust me, it's much easier to program like this than on a single line. Now once we are in our offers tag, we can type in recipes, and then a colon, and instead of the curly brackets, we're going to be doing square brackets, and you press enter, and now you put in the curly brackets. And because you've got square brackets, it's telling Jason to have multiple curly brackets within them. So we can have open curly bracket, close, close curly bracket, comma, and do that again, comma, do that again. So we can have multiple trading items. But we're just gonna have one trading item for now. And when I select this, it actually dips all the way back in here. So you can just press tab and that shoots your cursor right back up. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is buy. Now this tag is for purchasing an item. So this is not the item that you get. This is the item that you use to get an item. This is your currency basically. So if you put in a colon, then the curly brackets, and then press enter. You can put in ID, colon quotes, Minecraft, colon emerald. So that's what we're going to use. And then we're gonna put in a comma at the end, enter count so how many emeralds this item will cost so we can make it three emeralds and then put a b at the end for byte because this is a number and you only really need a b for this i don't know why we have b's and g's and c's and, and that is basically it now just remember everything in minecraft is case sensitive so when i have a capital c in count that's going to work if i have a if i have a small b in the front of buy then that is how it's going to work so make sure everything is in line so with our current code, we can do Control A, Control C, go to Minecraft, enter the command block, replace the old code with a new code, press done, spawn the villager, open it up. Now you can see three emeralds for air. I don't know if I made Minecraft trades better or worse. So apparently I can't purchase air. But that's disappointing. So instead, after buy with the curly brackets, we're going to put in a comma, enter, and then we're going to type in sell. So this is going to be the item that you actually get when you purchase it for three emeralds. So we're going to open that as well, just like before. ID, let's buy a diamond. We're going to put Minecraft diamond. Minecraft, colon, diamond, comma. How many diamonds do you get? Well, that would just be one. So now if you copy the code, replace the code, delete the code, spawn in another one. Three emeralds for one diamond. <laughs> just like that. So now let's add another recipe. On these curly brackets, which are actually lined up over here, we can put in a comma, press enter, open these up, and now we can add in a new item. So for buy, we can do also a Minecraft emerald. Now let's make this one emerald. Then the item you actually buy with the cell tag, the ID, Minecraft, how about sponge? Because it's the closest thing to cheese in Minecraft. So we can just put in a comma, enter, count 64B. So now if you copy the code, paste it in, he's selling a whole stack of sponge or an emerald. Don't mind if I do. But this isn't the end of the story. You can keep adding more and more different items you can buy and sell, but it's not everything. We've actually got another tag. Under buy, we can just say buy capital B. Then we can open that up. ID Minecraft diamond this time. Count to be. To be or not to be. And the code is broken. That's fant- Oh, I forgot to put a comma. Because you'd have a tag, put in a comma for what's coming next. Tag, comma for what's next. Tag, lost item in the list so we don't need a comma. So now this code will work. Perfect. Enter, open. So now we've got buy and then buy B. So in this case, it would require you to have one emerald and two diamonds to get a whole stack of sponge. This is useful if some items are not expensive enough. Now, obviously, if I go to Minecraft and spawn in that villager again with the same code as before, 
a whole stack of emeralds, and I just keep trading. As you can see, it actually locks up, and this, and the villager has to restock, which is a bit of a problem because uh, I don't care. So what we're going to have to do is that within this tag, so this entire shopping item, after sell, we're going to put in a comma, enter, max with a small m, uses with a capital U. Then we can put in a colon, and in the max uses, we can say you can only buy this item once. And then the villager has to restock. And because it's a librarian, it's going to have to restock with a lectern. So if we spawn in the villager, three emeralds, one diamond, here are three emeralds. Now you can see it immediately locks up, because we've only said it, you can only trade once, and I can only buy one diamond once until it restocks. So if you want a basically an infinite amount of uses, we can make it either 32767, which is the famous 32k stuff. But because the maximum integer limit on a computer is a little higher than that, we're going to type in the maximum integer limit, which is 21474836647. And that actually works. Three emeralds, one diamond. Get a whole bunch of emeralds. Look at that, a perfect nine stack. Yeah, this is gonna take a while. So let's recap. We've got our buy and sells within our recipes tag and offers. We can buy, sell, and have max usage. And we have the same down here. Buy, buy B, and sell. And I can actually add in that max usage thing as well. But for this maximum integer limit, I believe that if you're on a server, I don't think this might work, so we might as well leave it at 32767. And now for my favorite part. If you've seen my last tutorial, I showed how you can make custom names or custom enchantments. So we can get a villager to trade us with an enchanted item or with an item with a custom name. And we can do the same for the buy section, so we can have a custom currency. So let's make a new section to purchase items. We're going to have buy. The ID is going to be Minecraft gold underscore nugget. Count. Make this 32. So this is going to be an expensive item. But then after that, we're going to add in a comma. And our new variable for this item is going to be tag. So just like how at the top, when you opened summon Minecraft villager, and then we have an open tag over here, this is all just one big tag. So essentially, everything we've done here, we can put within this tag as well. So if you give it a colon, the opening and closing uh, brackets, and then press enter, now we can add in custom NBT or Minecraft Gold Nugget. So as before, I can just do the commands in the other tutorials, display, and I'll just make this command in one line because it's just going to be easier to see when we scroll up and down. So we can just put in name, colon, the hyphens, put in the curly brackets, quotes, text, coin, color is gold, and italic is false. So if you copy this code, put it in the command block, enter 32 coin. Huh? So instead of asking for a normal emerald, it's going to be asking for a gold huh? nugget with an NVT tag with a display tag, and we called it coin. And just to prevent the villager from summoning in the command block, I'm just going to make it one, so he spawns on the top. So now, with our tag, with our display tag, we can do the same for the sell item. So this line connects to that, so you can see those two light up, so we can put a comma there, sell, ID. So let's make it a diamond underscore pickaxe. Actually, a netherite underscore pickaxe. Comma, count, 1B, because there's only one pickaxe, you can't stack the thing. Comma, tag. So the netherite pickaxe is going to have its own set of tags. Instead, we can do enchantments. Open that up, ID, efficiency. Make it 5, Mending, level 1, and Fortune, level 3. So with 32 gold nuggets, with our display tag, you can purchase one netherite pickaxe with Efficiency 5, Mending 1, and Fortune 3. So we can save this file, copy and paste the code, hop into Minecraft, paste this in, spawn the villager in, and here's our netherite pickaxe. But unfortunately, we don't have 32 gold nuggets. So if we get ourselves some gold nuggets, and just split this in half so we show we have 32, she's even holding the item, we cannot, unfortunately, trade. So the problem here is that Minecraft is asking for a gold nugget with a custom in BT, but we just have an ordinary golden nugget. So what we must do is give ourselves 
the golden nugget with exactly the same NBT. So here's our display tag. So we can just copy this and then paste it in here. So now we have a gold nugget named coin. And now if you trade him the golden nuggets, we can actually give it to him because it has the custom tags. And this can be said and done for anything. And you can add this tag to any sell or buy. So our villager visually looks amazing and he can sell things from items to exchange for other items, two items exchanging for items and items with NBT buying items with other NBT. So this villager is actually complete with these custom trades and you can just keep adding more and more trades. And that is the whole villager. Very well done. And now for some extras. As you can see that villager was running around a lot and not standing still. And plus he doesn't have a custom name. So now if you want to put this kind of villager on a server but you don't want him running around and you want to give him a custom name, make him glow, make him silent and you can make it so that the villager can't be damaged, you can add the following tags. So if I highlight this tag, go all the way down, you can see that's highlighted which means this tag is the office NBT, so we can add a comma after that. And now we can just start adding normal tags. So the first tag we can add is invulnerable. This makes it so that the entity cannot be damaged. And then the next tag is custom name. Now this is self-explanatory, so we can just give it text, cheese boy, color, red, italic, pulse, and then spawning that villager in. His name is cheese boy. And if you're in creative mode, you can still hurt the villager and he's going to run away. And apparently people with operator or just OP with commands can hurt the villager as well. So, so only people without OP on servers can't harm this villager. But I can. And now for the next tag, persistence required. If you make that 1B, essentially this mob will never despawn. I mean, he's got a custom name, so it won't despawn anyways, but just to be safe, this tag will prevent the mob from despawning. The next tag is glowing, so that the, well, the mob is glowing. Like, you can think of this villager as selling some really amazing items. And the next tag is silent. It's just because I'm tired of hearing all the... And last but not least, we're going to add in an attributes modifier. Now this may sound scary, but it's pretty easy. Attributes, colon, then square brackets, then curly brackets. Then we do name, colon, generic, dot movement, underscore speed, comma, base. And then for the movement speed of this mob, we'll just be zero. So with all that, the mob will not speak the mob will not make noise, he's glowing, his name is Cheese Boy, and we can push him around, but he will not physically move. Even if we spawn in a zombie, he will not attempt to run away. I'm a villager, and I'm built different. But now there's one more tag that we can add. Now the name tag only appears when my cursor is over the entity, so we can just add a tag after this. So from the opening square bracket and the closing one can add a comma. The last tag is custom name visible 1B. Eliminate this one. Oh, wrong command. Okay. Yeah, I'm still built different. So now if I spawn in the villager, his name tag is always visible whether or not my, my, my cursor is on it. And that is a complete villager with custom tags. And that's the end of this 20 minute long video, hope you enjoyed and learned something new. As for the commands in the description, I am putting that to my Discord server instead because the command is too big for the YouTube description. So you can hop onto my Discord server, check out commands, and if you need help with anything, you can always go and ask in the help section. Or help channel, help chat, log, place, thing. I've also got the link to the Minecraft wiki where I got all of this code to begin with and also a link to the text editor I was using, there's a lot of links down there. Anyways, goodbye and see you in another tutorial. Anything you would like to say before we go?